Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. This is going to be a first impression and a slight little bit of discussion on a very popular knife from Kaiser, the Kaiser Feist. Well, you may go, why do you have a, a pair of two here? Well, because we're looking at a particular version of this knife, and in some ways we owe it to Spyderco. All right, Spyderco has this long-standing and well-known tradition for when they get a popular model, they wear that thing out. They make it in every conceivable version, in every conceivable steel, because they know people will keep buying these knives. And look, as a knife enthusiast, I love this, because I know that if I get a Spyderco that I enjoy, and I think that's going to be popular... I'm going to be able to get it in any steel I want and any handle material I want. And then I'll probably be able to further upgrade it to, you know, with aftermarket parts like I have with this S45 VN Para 2. Okay, so as a knife enthusiast, I think that's absolutely great. And so what we're looking at with this Kaiser Feist, I have to say when the Kaiser Feist first came out, I was not all that interested. Okay, but I, I was immediately cognizant of the clean, simple design and how attractive it was. And, and based on that, I was like, look, this is a cool knife. It's just too small for me. So it's going to be a hard pass at like, a, you know, it's like two and three quarter inch blade or something like that. Very small knife, very diminutive, kind of a cute looking knife. And, and for me, that's, a, that's not something I'm interested in. But... Because it was popular and, and that clean design, just look at this knife. It is, you know, Justin Lundquist has done a great job and deserves a ton of credit for this very simple, very attractive design, 100%. All right. Um, so here's the thing. The fact that this became popular meant that Kaiser was going to do a number of variations of it. And that was a win for me because there's no way I would have bought the original Kaiser Feist, but the XL was a little more compelling. And this particular version of the XL, when I was given an opportunity to get my hands on it, uh, it was kind of a no brainer. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a knife that needs to be, at least I need to spend some time with it and, and give it a chance and, and, you know, share that experience with you guys. So, uh, here we are first impressions of what I would argue is certainly the best for me, but probably the best overall version of the Kaiser Feist. That is if you don't mind spending a bit of money. Okay. So this is 20 CV on the blade up front. We've got a black wash, really, really nicely done. Very clean crown spine here. Um, great flat ground grind, thin behind the edge. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with English today. It is exclusively a front flipper and that's going to put some people off. It puts me off as well to a degree, but if you go all the way back to my discussion of front flippers, I feel like if the design only works well, okay, as a front flipper, and so it's it's primarily a way of, of getting a particular look, a particular feel to a knife, then I understand. And certainly in this case, it seems like the front flipper makes sense because the knife, you know, if you start giving a flipper off the back here or something else, it, it loses something in the closed position for sure. All right. Um, so front flipper certainly is appropriate for this particular design. Uh, it is, of course, bearing pivot as uh, ball bearing pivot as uh, all of you will know. Again, this knife has been around for quite a while. All right. Um, it's just this particular version that is, you know, new ish. And even this has been out there uh, for a little bit. Um, it is a liner lock. The liner is nice and accessible. They've got a little bit of a cutout here on the show side, which allows you to access that, uh, that liner lock pretty comfortably. Over here, we have a deep carry clip. You can see the screws are flush into that recess in the fat carbon scales. It is not reversible, so you can't move this over to the other side. And yeah, I am moving that a little bit so you can get the full effect of that really, really attractive looking purple fat carbon. All right. Uh, the stop pin is an internal sort of hidden stop pin, which again, makes sense for the design. I will say this about this knife. Um, this is more of an EDC style knife, right? This is not your hard use tactical, you know, go to war type of, um, type of option. It's just a very clean, very elegant EDC design. And in that role, 
uh, I think this is actually pretty good. Uh, I want to touch on the size. This, of course, is the XL version. And so it's not a huge knife. All right. I just want to kind of get that out there. It's seven and three quarters overall. So just under eight inches. Normally, eight inches is kind of my magic number. It's three and three eighths on the blade. Again, normally three and a half is, is again, my magic number. All right. Four and a half inches closed three and seven eighths grip area. So this very simple contoured handle does give you quite a bit of room. All right, so if you're someone who likes a smaller knife but has large hands, this could be a really, really good option for you. All right, there are a few out there that uh, that can kind of work if, uh, if you have larger hands. The weight on this is a pretty lightweight 3.25 ounces very very comfortable this is one of those knives you don't really feel in your pocket so again you know really really good and comfortable as an edc plus of course you're getting this very clean uh lundquist design with really really nice upgraded materials i already mentioned it but i'll just say again the blade on this is going to be 20 cv you can see that over here you've probably read it when i showed this side of the blade a couple of minutes ago uh, so 20 cv combined with this absolutely gorgeous fat carbon uh, i think this makes a lot of sense um there's not a bunch of versions of this, at least, you know, if you know of any, let me know. But I think it's just the purple and black that, that you can get this in. Uh, at least that's all I was able to find when I did a little bit of Googling. Uh, but even at that, this is a really, you know, it's a nice, co nice color combination, very attractive knife. And one that can also do a pretty darn good job in that EDC role. All right. So uh, that's my initial thoughts. Beautiful knife, really, really uh, nothing to nothing stands out as as really problematic for me in an EDC role. Okay, um, I'll spend some time with this. I'll carry it. I'll use it a little bit, and I will come back with a full review and discussion. But honestly, I don't. You know, I will see, but I don't anticipate having a real issue with this. Like other front flippers, you know, I, I don't always love the, you know, you're sort of stuck using the thumb method there. So there's really only one deployment method. Um, and so if you're not a front flipper guy, there's just no other option here, right? You're, you're kind of stuck with that. And so that might put some people off right away. Um, again, in, in this dot design, I see why going with the front flipper makes sense. Still not my favorite option for deploying a knife, but uh, I'm going to give it some time and I'll come back with uh, a bit more to say about that and the knife overall in a couple of months time. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check those channel sponsors. We will talk to you soon.